Gumby, you know what one Mexican alligator lizard said to the other in the tree? Abronia, hey, how's it hanging? <laughs> Welcome back to another surprise episode of Nature's Jewels. I'm your host, Mr. Crawlings, and today I got me some awesome animals from my buddy Dan at Animal House in McGuanago, Wisconsin. So if you guys are in McGuanago, Wisconsin, go over and check out his shop in um, McGuanago. It is awesome. I don't know how many times I can say McGuanago. It's just fun to say. It's spelled out like Muckwanago. Anyway. Uh, he's got some really amazing animals and he hit me up and told me that they had some Abronia Garminia in, uh, at his shop and um, he had actually a trio of the blue-eyed um, arboreal Mexican alligator lizards. Now sometimes they can have black eyes or the more desirable ones are the blue eyes or the blue gray eyes. And this is a species that I've wanted to work with for the last six years since I knew about them. I, I probably knew about them around about five, five or six years ago. And uh, I was obsessed, but they're so hard to come by in captivity. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they are still wild collected because there's not enough people working with a breeding these species for captivity. And that is where I come in. Now about five or six years ago when I couldn't get these, I decided to get red-eyed crocodile skinks and I bred them with relative success. Um, I would have eggs uh, frequently for my female. I, I raised up a couple of babies and um, that's when we were still kind of getting to know that species. Um, so that's the Tribulonotus. Tribula yeah, as the red-eyed crocodile skinks. But anyway, um, yeah, these uh, the Graminia are one of my favorite species of the Abronia. These beautiful green with the yellow eyes and the yellow jaw, um, just hands down my favorite um, clinic clinch reptiles recently did a, a video on these guys I hope I'm getting this is my male Gumby uh, and he is just super super sweet uh, these are wild collected unfortunately because like I said they they aren't available almost ever captive born and or bred um, so that's what I, I'm planning on working on. So I got Gumby here, and then I got a trio. So I got two females. One is named uh, Jade, and the other one is Esmeralda, because I thought that was such a, I mean, it means emerald, and it's a Latin name. So, I mean, how perfect is that, right? But these guys have been a joy to work with. Um, the details on their scalation is just... Uh, Words can't express uh, how amazing these beautiful little reptiles are. And the other thing that I really enjoy about them, I live in the northern uh, hemisphere of the United States. So I live in uh, Wisconsin specifically. But Wisconsin and Minnesota and uh, Michigan, we get a lot of really cold, cold temperatures here. And these guys prefer that. It's awesome. I don't even have to. I don't even have to provide them with a heat source. Um, actually, uh, overheating is one of the common things that can kill these beautiful little creatures. So uh, I just provide a UVB bulb, um, and because they do like a taller enclosure, I do provide um, the 10.0 UVB, just because it's got a lot uh, deeper of a spectrum. It can, can it can throw the UVB rays a lot farther down in their enclosure to make sure that they don't develop metabolic bone disease. Um, but yeah, I, I tong feed each one of them uh, about every other day 
to every third day of vitamin dusted uh, cricket. And then I also provide a, um, I have mineral supplements as well. And I'll, I'll dust one of the crickets with the mineral supplements too, to make sure they're getting all of the uh, vitamins and minerals that they need. On top of gut loading your, your insects, you should always gut load your crickets or dubia or whatever you're feeding because um, healthy insects produce beautiful, healthy, captive reptiles. And I want to give these guys the absolute best possible life I can. I can. And um, the other thing that I like to do with them, now here in Wisconsin, it's getting around fall time. Uh, we're coming up on October. And uh, the temperatures are cooling down. But provided that the temperatures are around 68 to, I would say, 76 degrees outside, I, I wouldn't suggest it being much warmer than that. If you want to move your abronia outside to get some natural UVA and UVB sun rays. Um, but uh, if it is warmer than that, I would just definitely recommend bringing them inside a lot sooner. I wouldn't leave them out there for any extended periods of time. But they love these screen enclosures, that, um, that nice flowing air movement outside. They're getting that all the vitamins that they can from the UVA and UVB that they're not going to be getting during the winter months. I do plan on uh, cycling them. I believe that's going to be a uh, key to uh, producing them in captivity. So I'll be cutting back the light cycle to about maybe eight hours a day in the dead of winter, really slowing them down, um, keeping them nice and cool, and um, you know just providing food occasionally. Now here in this enclosure, it's I love this thing, you guys. Um, this one is from Zoomed. This is a uh, 18. You want to go back, Gump? Here, let me show you a close up of Gumby real quick. I want to get them back. They're really great at handling. The thing about it is, I just don't want, I don't like to handle them too, too long. Um, I feel like that can cause undue stress. It's not that they're entirely skittish or afraid of people in general, but the more they can relax and sit in their environment, the, the safer they feel, the better they feed, um, and, and just everything overall. I just like to keep them in their enclosure. Also in here, I used a little bit of like garden wire and then a small um, deli cup. And I keep mealworms up in there in the uh, arboreal one. And I also leave a little bit of calcium and mineral supplement in the bottom for the mealworms to crawl around in. And I've seen my females going to that dish and eating from it. So it's a really great way to provide insects when you're not home to, to feed them. It gives them some nice grazing opportunities. And then the same with the lower portion down there. Uh, I have a small deli cup recessed and I put small dubia roaches in there for with a little bit of the vitamin and calcium in there as well. These guys are really awesome. I'll toss in some large crickets occasionally for them to forage on, to crawl around and hunt. Um, I give them a lot of the fake uh, leaves and vines to hide behind and underneath in the back. And then um, I have this unhooked and out here right now because I'm actually going to move them outside, but it's long cutting day for everybody apparently. But um, here you'll notice a hose. This goes to a monsoon misting system and that comes through the back and actually sprays the, the enclosure um, every two hours for about 20 seconds. So that uh, creates really nice ambient humidity because the other thing that can kill these guys more than heat uh, or just about as bad as heat is the dehydration. I do occasionally, like every other day, I take him out and I just soak him in a, a shallow bowl of water and that allows him to take drinks and just soak and, and you know bathe or whatever he wants to do in the water. And I've seen a significant uh, improvement in him. And I think he knows how much I love him. That's why he's so sweet to me. That's, that's what I'm going to say in my head. But anyway, um, yeah, this is my... 
I got a Bronia Garminia, guys. It's awesome. I'm super stoked to be working with the Blue Eyes. Um, Mex Arboreal Mexican Alligator Lizards. I just couldn't be more stoked about it. Um, and hopefully this trio over the, the next several years will produce for, for me, for us. And I'll build a collection of these guys. Uh, we'll keep some nice clean bloodlines going. Uh, having the two different females. And um, I'll make them available for you guys in the near future. I don't know. I'm just really excited. Um, Dan at Animal House out in uh, Maguanago, I really appreciate you, brother. You are a, a huge asset to the reptile and invertebrate community. And, uh, yeah, I just can't thank you enough. So just a very special shout-out to Dan and Brooke, my girl Brooke out there. She's got indigos and black and white tegus. I mean, I got some really awesome friends, guys. But uh, for me, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions on any care husbandry, how I set this all up, then um, please feel free to leave a comment down below. We have a nice small channel, and I love talking to everybody who reaches out to me. Um, it is a true, it, it's a real blessing and an honor. Um, until next time, if you guys keep it, keep it crawling. We'll see you real soon.